Nowadays, if you need compositing and you're using a standalone window manager on Xorg, you're probably going to use Pycom or one of the various forks of it, adding in random feature you might need. If you're using a desktop environment like KDE or GNOME, they've got their own built-in solutions. But there was once a time where one project basically reigned supreme. That project being Compiz. Now, Compiz was very well known for its flashy effects. Most notably things like the burn effect you're seeing here on opening windows and closing windows, this flashing effect when a window opens, and things like wobbly windows when you close them or when you move them around like this. But Compiz was also being used for more subtle things as well, like basic animations and window transparency and things like that, and that's the way that most systems were using it, especially the desktop environments that shipped Compiz as their compositor. But one thing you might not know is Compiz is still perfectly usable today. There are basically two versions of Compiz, and one of them is actively maintained. I say actively maintained, it's fairly slowly developed. You have the 0.8 series, this was the original project, this is mostly stagnant, there are some minor things that are done every so often, but most people using Compiz are now on the 0.9 series, otherwise known as Compiz Reloaded. This was basically rewritten in C++, and it is being developed in some fashion, but it's fairly slow. The other benefit it has is unlike the original version, where you have all of these different Compiz packages, the new version is just one singular Compiz, and that's what you install. But nowadays, outside of a few edge cases, you don't really see individuals, let alone entire distros, actually shipping Compiz. But why is that? It's still a perfectly functional compositor, and in many ways does way more than things like Pycom can do, not as much so in the desktop environment case, but still, if you want really advanced effects, it's probably the best way to do it on Xorg. And that's sort of the thing. The desktop environments are one of the major reasons why it's not used anymore. Gnome and KDE, right now in 2022, are undisputedly the biggest desktop environments on Linux. We can argue about whether they are the best, but in sheer popularity, they are the most popular. And a big reason for why GNOME is so popular, maybe the main reason, is that it ships on Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is undisputedly the biggest distro in the entire world. But there was a time where Ubuntu wasn't shipping GNOME. It was instead shipping Unity. And what was Unity at the time using for compositing? Well, it was using Compiz, but there was a slight problem. A few years prior to that, in 2012, the Compiz maintainer basically just abandoned the project. Originally, he made the project as like a testing case to see if these effects were actually possible. And he just decided, I don't really care about this anymore. But Canonical and Ubuntu at the time were sort of all in on Unity. So they had to take the project on for themselves. And as you might expect, when a corporation takes on a community project, a lot of the time, the community isn't very happy. This led to the whole Compass community basically fracturing, leading to a bunch of different forks being made, none of them really catching on at the time. Things like Compass Reloaded, Compass Plus Plus, and things like that. When Canonical eventually decided, hey, we don't really care about Unity and Compass anymore, we want to go back to Gnome, there was no one left to maintain it. But the other big thing is there was a time where both KDE and GNOME didn't have built-in compositing. KWIN didn't have it, Mutter didn't have it. If they wanted to have compositing, even just basic stuff like transparency and basic animations, they pretty much had to use Compiz or one of the other solutions at the time. And since Compiz was the one being most developed, that's what they ultimately settled on. Once they eventually decided that they wanted to control the way that their compositing worked and have more freedom on what they can do, they decided they no longer needed it, and when they didn't need it, most people didn't need it either. Not to say that Compiz just suddenly vanished at that point, there was a period of time where KWIN did actually have compositing, but KDE still had bindings to work nicely with Compiz. So if you didn't like the way that KWIN was handling stuff, you could get rid of that 
and then bring Tompas back in and do all of the old stuff that you were doing. Eventually, though, K-Win matured and got to the state where the KDE devs felt comfortable getting rid of those old bindings and then mainly focusing everything around K-Win. And also not to say nowadays that you can't use Compass inside of KDE. It's just at that time, it was set up to work in a much nicer fashion than it works nowadays. But there's also a more technical reason why Compass just doesn't really make that much sense to use. It's basically an artifact of its time. So at the time, it may have changed nowadays. I don't want to say it's exactly like this now. But at the time, it required one of two things to run. Either running on XGL or running through AIGLX. So XGL was basically obsolete when it launched. This was a display server based on X11 and was a part of Xorg until around 2008. And it was one of the attempts to have 3D accelerated graphics inside of the X11 server. Nowadays, it's basically a given that your system is going to have 3D acceleration. If you go and launch up Doom Eternal, for example, very clearly a game that would benefit from that functionality. You run the game, and it's going to run properly on your GPU. Back then, though, on Linux, it was not a given, and XGL had a method to do this. It relied on 2D hardware acceleration, which does not exist on modern GPUs. So all 2D rendering on a modern GPU is basically just flat in 3D. It does what it needs to do. It means you don't need to have extra hardware just to worry about that functionality. Now there was another method to do 3D acceleration, OpenGL. And OpenGL, totally fine for making games where you're doing everything in one window. What it's not good at though, is dealing with things like window management, which your compositor sort of needs to do. And XGL was created to basically address those limitations, even though it did so in a kind of scuffed way. So what XGL would do is basically wrap around OpenGL to worry about where windows are located to let OpenGL do the rendering. This would allow something known as OpenGL direct rendering. What it would do is basically tell the X server where it needs to draw. It would do this by marking an area on the screen with basically a blue square, and then the OpenGL output would go there. This is called direct rendering because it's basically rendering directly to the screen. And if you're using one of those old systems and your GPU drivers weren't working correctly, this is why you would randomly see blue squares on the screen because the OpenGL rendering couldn't actually complete. All of this time, Xorg basically remained 2D first because re-engineering the entire system at this point would be a massive undertaking. But this led to a bit of a problem. And this problem still persists today, where XORG requires two sets of drivers. You need your 2D X11 drivers. These are commonly going to be brand specific things like your XF86 video dash AMD GPU or dash Intel and things like that. And then your 3D OpenGL drivers, which are commonly going to be provided by Mesa, unless your name is NVIDIA or you're using the AMD Pro drivers. But if you're using, say, an AMD GPU like I am, it's going to be 2D X11 from your XF86 drivers and then 3D OpenGL from Mesa. But this does cause a bit of an issue where you now have two sets of drivers both fighting over the same bit of hardware. They have really improved nowadays, and you know, you don't have your system just randomly hitching for no reason, but it's still not the best of solutions. So the solution to XGL was a new system known as AIGLX, and this system is still around today. This is Accelerated Indirect GLX, and I'll get to that indirect in just a moment. So rather than rendering directly to the screen like XGL does, instead what it's going to do is do OpenGL acceleration through the X11 API. This is why it is indirect, it is not doing it directly, it's going through a third party. The problem with direct rendering is if something breaks, the X server has no idea that anything's wrong. It's just broken, it seems like that's totally fine, it rendered, that's what we expected. Whereas if you're doing it through the X11 API, it gives the X server a lot more control over how that result should be and whether the result is actually working properly. But AIGLX did come with a performance drop and modern hardware is fast enough to deal with the fact that AIGLX is not as efficient as XGL, even though XGL wouldn't run on modern hardware. But 
it is still a less efficient way of doing rendering. But at the time, trying to brute force comp is just wasn't going to be as pleasant of a solution for the average sort of user. Also nowadays, the way that most people do compositing is fairly simple. You have some transparency, maybe you have some blur, and blur actually is fairly expensive, especially with a moving window, and maybe like a basic slide animation, that's pretty much it. Nothing compared to like a wobbly window or a burning window and things like that. So since XGL is completely dead, and AIGLX is a totally functional solution, but not the most efficient usage of the GPU, this led to the development of a couple of new systems. OpenGL ES, EGL, and also the Xorg developers shifting their focus away from Xorg and working on Wayland instead. And I would argue that Wayfire in many ways is a spiritual successor to Compiz. And one of the nice things about Wayland is it can actually effectively use the GPU, assuming you're not NVIDIA, effectively use the GPU and lead to a far more efficient set of effects. Not to say it's a perfect solution because it doesn't have the same level of history that Compiz has, which has tons and tons of plugins, but things like that will be developed over time. When I started using Linux, Compiz was already basically long dead, so I can only really look back on what Compiz used to be, and it did seem like a really, really cool idea for the time. But nowadays, a lot of people seem to care more about a clean and minimal design, but I know Compiz still has its supporters, so I'm not saying that you shouldn't use Compiz if you want to use it, but it does have a really interesting history. So let me know, did you ever use Compiz, or are you using Compiz today? I would love to know. So if you like this video, you want to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and subscribe, pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.